Hello everyone and welcome back to my flight career series, this time in X-Plane 11, and for the first time in this series we are not going to be flying in a Cessna 172. Instead I'm going to be test flying the Aerobasque Robin DR-401, and this is a freeware plane made by a publisher that normally publishes payware planes, but they've released this free on the uh, xplane.org forums, and so I'm just going to try it out. It is within the class that I've been flying. Uh, it is a fairly light uh, general aviation plane, and uh, we'll see how it works out. Maybe I'm test flying it to see if uh, I should purchase it for my little organization. Uh, technically, with a private pilot license, by the way, you're not allowed to do commercial activities, but let's just keep that quiet between us. <laughs> so anyway, we'll, we'll get to that. I'll, I'll log enough flight hours so that I, and uh, I'll take the other lessons up in Seattle so that I can uh, become a proper commercial pilot. But um, first, first things first, we are here at uh, Yuba County Airport in Marysville, and I am going to try out this plane on a normal traffic pattern sort of thing. The plane did come with a checklist. This is a normal operations checklist. Fairly simple as you can see. Pre-flight, very few things to really worry about. Starting the engines, after engines start and all that. And there is also a flight manual. Uh, this is only 10 pages long compared to much more for a lot of other planes. They, they run maybe in the hundreds of pages sometimes. Uh, but uh, installation, the Garmin G1000. Uh, so it's going to have a glass cockpit, and they recommend top settings on that. That's no surprise. If you could run top settings, you might as well. Taking a look at the, the um, performance features, uh, this is a 155 CDI version of the Robin uh, DR401, uh, and uh, there are different models with different performances. Uh, this is about, about mid-range, I guess. Uh, it is a touring aircraft rather than a training one. They have uh, less powerful training aircraft, but as you can see, Eco, cruise speed, 122, climb rate, 740, uh, and then uh, max payload, 1,100. Useful load is only 440 kilos, so basically, you know, four people uh, plus some luggage. Uh, Takeoff distance, 400 meters. Uh, make sure we know whether it's meters or feet. Flying range, 1,600 kilometers, it's about 800 nautical miles. It's very much in the range of a Cessna 172, except with a low mounted wing instead of a high wing. And that's what it'll look like inside once we start out, and we know where everything is in theory. There's not that much stuff. Okay, so here we are. It is cold and dark. Let's take a look at the outside for a sec. Interesting canopy. It slides back like that. So, so... Got a window opening there to throw in the luggage. That's good. A little bit hard to get into the back seats, but... Seems roomy. Okay, so let's start things out. Let me bring up the checklist. Canopy closed and locked. Well, that is done. Parking brake locked. Okay, battery switch, that's master engine. Battery switch on, right? Hey, ah, there we go. All right, wow, it turns on the avionics right away. I didn't actually flip the avionics. Okay, alt switch on. Yeah, we probably, come on. Oh, you have to actually pull it up, okay. Alternator is on, and let's close that. Okay, so fuel level is at half, so that's checked. Fuel selector. Fuel is on. Strobe light. Wait, I think uh, it's flash, right? Yeah, flash is the strobe light. The other systems. Fuel pump is this one. Hopefully that's all right. Okay, fuel pump is on. Thrust lever is idle. Propeller area is clear. Engine, master engine switch on. Preheating, okay. 
Preheating light, wait until off. Yes, that I've got. Okay, well, we are ready to start. Oh, ah, there we go. I have to just give it a little bit more of a turn as usual. Okay, so engine has started. Ah, a little bit of a panel shake. Jeez. Okay, check oil pressure at idle. Oil pressure seems fine. Alt light check off. Yep, alt light is off. FADEC lights are off. Okay, electrical fuel pump off. FADEC backup battery test. Alternator off. And battery off. Well, that wasn't right. Right. Maybe we shouldn't check the alternate battery? Okay, well, I'm gonna take it. I'm not going to try and check the alternate battery because I'm not entirely sure I know how. Okay, avionics power switch on. Sacramento INTL information kilo. 2100 Zulu weather. Wind light and variable. Visibility more than Wind 10. light and variable. Sky clear. Temperature 28. Voltmeter check in green range. It is Altimeter green. 2995. Altimeter set. It's uh, 2995. Ah, there's the barometer. Okay, 2995. Very good. Well, they're communicating with me. Let me see. Okay, it's not gonna be Oakland. This is Sacramento. Maybe, whatever. I don't want to file a flight plan. We're just doing VFR. Okay, maybe we'll just leave that be. All right, well, everything seems to be all right. So lights, um, well, let's have those on. November, zero, one, x-ray, pop-up, climb and maintain, flight level, three, five, zero. Okay, on the other hand. November, zero, two, x-ray, pop-up, Y heading, one, eight, zero. Okay, that should tune us away from the very annoying ATC in here, completely different from how it is in flight sim. Let me get a look at the map. Okay, so we are parked here and then we'll uh, take a left and then another left and then a right onto the runway. It's got interesting upturned wings. That helps with stability. Fixed landing gear. It certainly has a Robin-esque feel to it, so I feel like it's appropriately named. Okay, we have lowered flaps. And we have throttle button. Rotating. And we're off. Gear up. And flaps up. And let's climb to a decent altitude. Not too fast, though. So, this is the Yuba City environs in X-Plane 11. Obviously, much more high fidelity than in Flight Sim because I've got Ortho 4 XP photo scenery here. Yeah, looking pretty good here. Oh, let's not drift too much. I should maintain runway heading here for a bit. Eighty-five knots seems to be about right for this plane as far as climbing right now. I know the manual said that a different uh, 
velocity was good for climbing, but I'll go with this. Okay, I think we can turn... Wow, it turns... It's very nimble, let me put it that way. And actually we should be at... It was 32, so 23. That's about where we need to be. It is very loud, though I guess it could be louder even. We've got a persistent roll to the left, so I might actually put some aileron trim in. Okay, uh, my hand is off the control stick and it's nice and stable in a climb. 95 knots now. Let's level off a bit. Wow, it's loud on the outside. So that's Yuba City. And our little Robin DR-401. Still drifting higher here. Now remember, there are airspace restrictions in play here. I cannot go above 4,100 feet around here. So let's keep to that. So this plane has a 155 horsepower engine, that's why it's the 155 variant of it. And it is a bit faster than the Cessna, as you would expect, perhaps. That's pretty sharp looking, actually. This is great quality here, around these parts. Oops, drifting. Okay, so if I wanted to tune the Marysville locator, the VOR, I think it's 110.5. So let me see if I can switch that. Okay, there we are. And... That, I don't think we're 50 nautical miles away, so that doesn't seem right. Oh, it's, that's the GPS. It's still reading that we want to go to... Well, somewhere else. I don't think that's right at all. Yeah, Nav 1 is the DME I wanted. I'm not doing as good a job as far as keeping this plane within my specified altitude right now or my heading ah there we go I can change the track like that all right that makes me happier okay Okay, but seriously, the sound is really loud, so let's see. I mean, as you can see, I've already got the sound tuned down by quite a lot. So let's put those lower. Okay, let's see. Well, that's better. It's like for each plane, I have to do it separately. So I'll have to get used to using this G1000 system with uh, its multi-function displays rather sophisticated compared to what I'm used to with the Cessna 172 of course these day uh, there is a variant of the Cessna 172 that uses this sort of glass cockpit thing but 
I have not flown that yet. Okay, turning towards the airport. Aiming for runway 32. And actually we see we're a little bit off there and quite high. Yep, I see a train on the tracks there. Zoom in, there is a train. Shouldn't get distracted though. There doesn't seem to be pappy lights in this direction, is there? Maybe I should have uh, landed runway 14, but that wouldn't be a full traffic pattern. I took off runway 32. Don't think it's unidirectional, but maybe. We're just barely beating out the train there. Okay. I don't know if this is a very good approach or not, but this seems like a very natural approach to me. The plane doesn't seem to be doing anything dubious. Okay, brakes on. Alright, well, anyway, that is just a quick video of a test flight with the Robin DR401. And new freeware plane available for X Plane 11, and I decided to try it out as our first plane besides the Cessna 172. But I doubt I'll be doing too much flying with it for the time being. I think I'll continue to focus on the 172 because it's available for more than just x 11. I don't have this for Microsoft Flight Sim, for instance, so gotta take that into consideration. It looks good, though. It's, it's a cute little plane. Okay, we have come to a stop, and I should learn how to shut her down, so let's see. Okay, checklist out. Climb, cruise, yes, we've done all those things. We didn't need a short landing, I just used one notch of flaps. Okay, after landing, electric fuel pump off. I probably should have had that off anyway. Wing flaps up, yeah. So apparently they put the electric fuel pump on before approach. And I was supposed to turn it off during flight, but I kept it on during the entire flight, which is not good. Okay, I believe my brake is set anyway. Thrust lever idle. And now they want me to put the wing flaps down for engine shutoff, so okay. Avionics off. Engine master switch off. After the engine stops, battery off. And apparently that's it for the shutdown of the plane. Uh, though I don't know if they want the fuel toggle switch off. That might be a good idea. And they didn't mention the alternator, but probably have that off too. And why don't we have that on stop? <laughs> uh, I probably should have had the starter on stop anyway. I don't know for sure though. Okay. And the strobe lights should be off. They, they didn't include those in the engine shutdown procedures. And there is no other page. Okay. Anything else I probably should... Oh yeah, these should be off. 
All right, I think now it's basically in the same state it was when I started it up. So that's good. All right, so there we have it. Just a quick video on the Robin DR401. And as I open up the cockpit and get out, I'll say thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did enjoy this video, please do press like. If you have any comments or suggestions, please leave them in the comment section below. And I'll see you next time.